So hello everyone. Um, I'm glad you came in. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Thanks for showing off. And you know the thing is with a with a with a room this size is that they're just playing you in a room. Uh, it happened to me once in Munich before that I spoke in a in a room that could fit like 150 or 200 people, and then about 400 people showed up. So everyone was like this in the against the walls, and now uh, they decided to put me in the in the keynote room, and uh, we have like 100 people. So for the guys and in the, in the, in the, in the, the, all the people in the back, uh, feel free to take a seat in the front. Uh, then I won't be so alone, like up here. Um, so yeah, pretty anxious. I never spoke to uh, in such a big room. Uh, but that being said, uh, let's go. So um, I'm Boris Wanspers. I'm a founder, co-owner of a company uh, in Amsterdam called Limoen Groen. I'm a front-end developer by origin. Uh, I love accessibility and everything related to accessibility. Uh, I'm also the chair of the Dutch Drupal Foundation. I founded the foundation about seven years ago, and I've been the chair since, uh, I think, three or four years now. Uh, now and then I like to work on Drupal code as well. I maintain a few Drupal modules. I now and then work on Drupal core, mostly accessibility related issues. So for example, um, for those who of you who are into accessibility, in the Bartik theme, there's an underline under the links. That's one of the patches I worked on. And also the, 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 the language of parts button in the CK editor. I think it's released in 8.2. It's a button uh, that you can use to mark a piece of text and say, well, this piece of text is not English, but it's French or whatever. So a screen reader will pronunciation, pr pronounce the, the piece of text in the correct accent and language. So I said, um, founder and co-owner of Limoen Groen. It's a Dutch word meaning lime green. Uh, we're based in Amsterdam, a five minute walk from the central station. Um, in the last fi uh, five years, we grew from three people to 14 at the moment. Uh, this is our opening. Oh, here I have shouldn't point at the screen here, I should point there. So this is uh, the opening of our new office uh, 10 months ago. And we focus on building websites that last. That's our slogan, sustainable websites. And we want to build websites that are accessible. So all our websites uh, are built with accessibility in mind so that everyone c can use a website, disregard place, location, disability, or whatever. And if you want to learn more about why we chose accessibility as a business proposition, I have a session on Thursday in uh, Schubert. Um, please attend. And the session is just a business talk, but it will go into that it is good to have a niche as a Drupal development agency to focus on a specific part of the market or a specific task and excel in that. Uh, so we're talking about accessibility as a business proposition. So recently we, we built a website for Eva Yinek. And Eva Yinek, she's a kind of an anchor man. She's a talk show host on a daily uh, uh, talk show, popular daily talk show on a Dutch uh, public, uh, public channel. Uh, and the website attracts about half a million unique visitors per month. And the website won a prestigious award called the Dutch Interactive Awards, which we were thrilled to won. Um, and a part of this project was to integrate Facebook insert articles and AMP. So what is it and how do they compare? Uh, both techniques are used to display content on a mobile device very, very fast. Facebook insert articles is only used on the Facebook app on your mobile device. Uh, and I'm talking about like a telephone, not, not a tablet or an uh, iPad. Um, and if you click on an article, it loads like instantly, really, really fast. And AMP, accelerated mobile pages, is kind of similar, only used within Google Chrome on a mobile device and used in the search results. So if you perform a search action on Google, it will display articles which are AMP enabled higher in the search results and very fast. And you'll see some examples of this. But most important, speed like both techniques mainly focusing on speed. This is what Google say themselves. I mean, think about it for a second. You're at a bus station and click on a link in your Twitter feed. You wait five seconds, you wait 10. You keep thinking, it must be amazing content if it takes so long to prepare. And right then you get pulled back into reality. A full screen interstitial asking me to buy sunscreen, a please like me dialogue, ads that distract from the content and make the page so slow you can't even scroll and as if that wasn't enough, a bunch of competing analytics scripts in the background that party hard every second and kill your phone's battery. Or maybe the analytics scripts just want to stop the phone from suffering and put it out of its misery quickly. I really don't know. 
So speed is key. And research shows that 40% of website visitors leave if a website web page isn't loading within three seconds. And I, uh, I, I see that myself. If I click on a link from Google and I'm waiting like one or two or three seconds, I already click away. Uh, you probably recognize that as well. And these slow loading times are often caused by an overload of assets on a web page, like a lot of JavaScript, advertisements, tracking software, images, videos, making the page load very slow. So Pingdom.com is a website to monitor your uptime of websites, and they did a research in back in 2015, and they launched a report with these numbers. Like they found out that the average number of HTTP requests on a single web page is 89, caused by average of 42 images, 21 JavaScripts, making it a, an average page size of three megabytes. And these numbers make that the page load, on average, for a single web page is five seconds. So there are a lot of pages even slower than five seconds. And I think I find these numbers very shocking. And this is why, why companies like Facebook and Google step in with their solutions. So how does it work? B it's kind of similar. There are a lot of similarities. Both work by prefetching content, uh, storing the, the content, the text and the images, on their own servers. And they allow a specific set of HTML elements that you can use to build up your page. Because they have a limited set of elements that they, that they use, they have full control on how they can, can preload and build the page. And they know exactly which content is being displayed on your screen and which content is below the fold. So which, which content they can like, uh, like lazy load when you scroll. Um, and both techniques require specific page variants. Both for Facebook and Google, you need a specific variant of your HTML page. So let's have a look at Google. Um, there's a small icon on the, on the news item. You can see this small flash, what's it called? Uh, thunderstruck icon uh, with the word AMP next to it. Giving you an indication that this article, North Korea accuses Trump of declaring war, is AMP enabled. And then there is a, a stream, a carousel with, with news items in this case, all about the subject, Trump. I couldn't find a better example, sorry for this. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see some, some, some other uh, uh, related items to Trump. I will show you the, the example in a, in a second. If you click on an item, you get onto a detail page. And from the detail page, you can scroll through other uh, news items around the same subject, but from other sources, other publishers. And if you want to share an item, you can use the sharing tool that your mobile device gives you. So I have an Android phone, for example, and I can share it through WhatsApp and Twitter and Telegram and whatnot. So here's an example. I Google Trump, and I get some results. First item is AMP enabled. I can see the carousel with AMP items. These are all AMP items. And there's some Twitter integration and Wikipedia integration. And then there's the regular search results. So and if you click on an item in the carousel, it loads pretty fast. I was recording this on a bad connection. So uh, usually it's even faster. And if you scroll down, you get some, uh, get some, some items below the, 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 the article. And if you click on an item, you can also swipe. You can see all these bullets on top. Oh, those went fast. You can see the bullets like just under the title, indicating you that you can slide to other uh, pages, other items around the same subject. It's for BBC, Huff Post, USA Today, etc. So for the visitor of your, of, of, for, the, for, the, for the person Googling for information, this is a really nice feature. It gives you a lot of information about the subject from different sources. And as a publisher, it's nice that Google displays like AMP articles on top of other search results. So your AMP enabled article will be highlighted uh, and the, the regular search results are way down at the page. So Facebook is kind of similar. They use the, the, the exact same icon as AMP does. And if you click on a detail page, it will bring you to the bottom of the page, showing you other articles, but only articles from the same Facebook page. So you won't be clicking, uh, you won't be sliding through, through other publishers, you stay within the same Facebook page. And if you, if you want to share stuff, you can only share that within Facebook. So you can post a link to an article to Facebook Messenger, you can post it on your Facebook wall, you can like it on Facebook, but you can't share an item, for example, to WhatsApp or Twitter. So here's an example. A lot of content, and then we get the articles. And you can see the same icon. So this article is AMP enabled, this one as well. See it's loading really fast. 
they offer some other tools as well. So if you have like photos within the body content, you can like each photo, or share each photo as well. This is a very long article, <coughs> but <coughs> all the way down, you will see other articles from the same uh, Facebook page. So it's kind of how we, how, how I would do like relevant content and Drupal, like related articles, but these are not like related, they are just from the same Facebook page. Um, they have the same like bullets on top that you can, that gives you an indication that you can swipe, uh, but the swiping is only within the Facebook page. And you can see it's, it's, it's preloaded, so it's really fast to, uh, to navigate through these items. So why would you use it, right? Obviously speed, the loading times are really fast, less than a second for Facebook, uh, Google as well. Facebook says they're 10 times faster and they have 20% more reach, 70% less chance of people abandoning the website because of these loading times. Google is a bit slower than Facebook, uh, but still four times faster and using 10 times less data than on a regular mobile search. Uh, and both have more control over how they can, like there's a limited set, but it gives you the snappy feeling because they have full control over how they can build the page. Here are some examples of how page, wh what Facebook offers on their instant articles layout. You can autoplay video, for example, in a pretty nice way. Uh, if you have images, you can click on an image and tap on an image to zoom into. It works pretty nice full screen. And if you have like landscape photos, you can also use uh, your phone to, if you tilt the phone, you, you like navigate through the photo. And they have maps, like interactive maps like this. And I think these features are pretty hard to do on a mobile website, uh, but come out of the box if you use Facebook instant articles. And according to Facebook, like their marketing sheet says, well, 20% more clicks and 30% more shares. So if it's up to Facebook, start using it today. But there's also some reasons not to use it because it's harder to implement, like tracking codes, advertisements. Uh, for us developers, it's extra work. Usually we are used to building a website like responsive desktop and mobile, but now we have to have another version for Google AMP and another version for Facebook instant articles. And not all HTML5 elements that we are used to are supported by Google and Facebook. So they, they both have their own set of elements that you can use to, to communicate, to display your content. Not all features are supported. Drupal, great community software. If you build a community around your news articles or your recipes with voting and comments or whatnot, um, you can't display all these features on your article. Facebook only allows Facebook comments, for example, but if you have comments in Drupal, it's very hard, I, I think, uh, impossible to show them on the, on the, on the article. Uh, and for now, you saw the example of Google um, displaying the content, the AMP-enabled articles on top of the regular search results. And that might be a great reason for publishers to, to enable AMP, but we're not sure what happens in a year or two. Maybe Google stops displaying these articles on top of the search results. Uh, also, it's no guarantee that AMP or Facebook instant articles still work in two or three years. So it might take a lot of work and energy now to, to implement it in the website. But who knows, maybe in two years, Google kills it or Facebook kills it. Like, and that, that sounds ridiculous, but Google Checkout is one example where we as developers uh, uh, cost us a lot of energy to implement Google Checkout and checkout processes in our e-commerce solutions. And then Google killed it. So I'm not sure what happens with AMP and Facebook instant articles. So let's continue a little bit more uh, on AMP. What is it? To start with, it's open source, which is nice. The full source code of, uh, of AMP is published on GitHub. You can check the code, you can even submit pull requests if you want to add new plugins. Uh, and it's open for other companies to use it. So, for example, Twitter could check the links that are shared on, on Twitter and see if the links have an AMP uh, variant as well, and then prefetch the AMP version. So if you click on a link from Twitter, it will load instantly just as Google does. Um, I don't think Twitter does it at the moment, but they, they, they could since the, the source code is open source. So how would you implement it? Um, I'm not really diving into the Drupal implementation. This is more like broad overview. 
but for every HTML version that you have, you, you need to have a specific AMP version as well. So in Drupal, this could be node-1-AMP, for example. And then you have to tell Google on the HTML version, like here is the URL of my AMP version, and on the AMP version, you have to tell them, here is the URL of my HTML version. So you can use the link tag to do so. You need to add a little piece of uh, schema.org code to explain the page to Google. So you have to tell Google, you're looking at a news article, this is not a recipe or a another piece of content, this is a news article, this is the headline, this is the date of modification, and this is the order and the publisher. And there's a few other fields that you can use, like a description. This is basic schema.org, really interesting stuff. If you haven't checked it out, do so. It's pretty uh, amazing what you can do with it. Um, if you want to use CSS to give it your own style and your own markup on Google, that's possible, but they are limited. It's like you can only use inline CSS, and there's it's limited to 50K. So it's a pretty small amount of CSS that, that is allowed to, uh, to style your articles. And then you have to use the style AMP custom uh, uh, tag. And it's not possible to add your own JavaScripts. You're limited to the JavaScripts Google uh, offers you. And the reason behind this is that they only use JavaScripts that load async asynchron asynchronically. So all the JavaScripts are really optimized to load as fast as possible. And by doing it in an async way, it's not blocking the page load. So Google can start building the page, or your, your device can start building the page without having to wait for the JavaScripts to be loaded. So this is an example of how you would embed a tweet. You just add the, the Twitter JavaScript that, that the AMP project gives you, and then you have a, an AMP Twitter tag with a Twitter ID. So Google knows, like, you have to fetch this, twit, this tweet and then display it in, a, in an embed tag. And they have other, like, JavaScripts as well, like Google Analytics or Comscore, or well, there's a lot of uh, JavaScript that you can already use. Um, and images, for example, you need like specific tags for all the HTML5 tags that we know. For example, a video, an image, an audio, advertisements, you need AMP clients of these tags. So this is how you would uh, display an image. Uh, within AMP, you use the AMP image tag. And the thing with AMP images, it's required to have a width and a height on an image, which is basically a good principle anyway. We should do that always, since it, it enables the browser to allocate the space needed to display the image without having to wait before rendering the page or seeing the content jump when the image is finally loaded. So this is a good practice anyway to do, but for Google it's required. If you don't have the width or the height uh, attributes, it won't display the image. And there's a few other tags, and I listed a few here so you get an idea of what's possible. Um, but they have a, a really good documentation on all the available tags. But you can see there's like Facebook comments and SoundCloud, and there are some available integrations to, to uh, add to your content page. There's also an iframe, so you can use the iframe, for example, to, to create your own advertisement if you want. And if we look at Facebook, um, apart from having your own Facebook client of your HTML, there's also a, a workflow process that you need to follow to get your um, uh, items on your Facebook page, like displaying the, the Facebook Instant Article version. So let's look a, a bit into that. First, you have to sign into Facebook, obviously, and enable Facebook Instant Articles on a page that you maintain. It's also, also very useful to download the Facebook Page Manager app, which is not the Facebook app, but another app that is useful if you manage Facebook pages since you can use the app to, to preview the, all the development articles uh, in the styles that you are going to use. I'll come back to that later. So then you come to a screen like this and you have to connect Facebook to your website. So you have to have a meta tag in your HTML uh, explaining to, to Facebook which uh, Facebook page belongs to the, to, the, to the website. And then you have to add some URLs, like testing URL staging, production. And if you, you're going to use uh, the, the RSS workflow to tell Facebook about your articles, which is a, uh, one option, you can tell Facebook this is the URL of the RSS feed with my development articles and with my production articles. Um, there is also a way to push uh, articles using the API, so you don't need to use the RSS workflow, but this is how we, how we do it, did it with the uh, API unit. And you can create some styles if you want. So um, they have an editor that, they, that you can use to, to select colors or to set fonts or to, I don't know, do a logo. It's called the style editor. And they have a preview option, so you can look like on the right side 
how the image would look in this styles in these styles. For for Ava Yinek, we just needed one style with with the orange color. Uh, but suppose you have a news website with I don't know a sports section and then a cooking section. You can say to Facebook like all the sports articles I want to have green green header and for the cooking articles I want a purple heading or whatever. You can set quote styles and whatnot. So it is limited, but you can do uh, you can you can do some things with it. So there's an interface with the the articles. This is the development articles overview. It's it's using it's displaying all the articles that it fetched from in our case from the development RSS feed. Um, and one more thing here is it will display if one of these articles is corrupt. For instance, if you use an image tag instead of the specific Facebook instance articles image tag, it will give you like a warning: this is an invalid article, and we will not be publishing this article. And then you can use a small pencil to update the content in the Facebook interface, changing the image tag to the correct tag, for example. Uh, in a production environment, you won't be doing that, but you can use the development uh, interface to debug your code and make sure that Drupal outputs the correct version. And then obviously you also have the production overview, same, same interface, but then you can see the status as well that the article is live. Um, and one more thing, if you want to enable this on your Facebook page, you have to go through a refu review process. Um, so you need five articles uh, that Facebook can review and then it will take a few days to get feedback. In my view, it seems like a formality since I just added some random articles and it was published, uh, uh, approved upon uh, without any issues. So as an example of how this article would look, uh, let's zoom in a little bit. There's three things I wanna highlight. You have the canonical tag, the link tag, to point to the HTML version. Then you have also have the, the Facebook article style that you can set. In this case, telling Facebook to use the test article style. And here's an example of how you would publish a video. And with the loop attribute, you can make sure that the video will continues continue playing after it's done, it will loop. So basically kind of similar to HTML, right? And then scroll down a little bit more. You see an example of uh, time elements where you can tell Facebook the, the, publish, pub the publish date and the, the modification date of your article. So, and if you are done making up this all HTML, you wrap it if you want to use RSS in a regular RSS item, and then within the content semicolon encoded. Let me check right here. J there, you just wrap in initial data. You just wrap in the, the full HTML that you just saw before. And this is the pretty easy way to to get your content to Facebook. Uh, in this project, we did the integration in custom code. Uh, using the Facebook Insta Articles SDK. It's a great software development kit that you can use for PHP. It's published on uh, GitHub. The full source code here is on GitHub. It's basically um, around three, three elements, sorry, three, three parts of the, of the code. You can use the elements to render single uh, elements, HTML elements into Facebook Insta Article elements. So for example, an image into the required image tag or a video or a piece of text or a blog quote. Uh, we use the elements a lot since the website is built around the paragraphs module and it's really nice if you have a quotes paragraph or an image paragraph or a slideshow paragraph to transform these, these single uh, pieces of content into Facebook elements. Uh, if you use, for example, a body field with a huge WYSIWYG field and the editor is allowed to enter images and whatnot in this WYSIWYG field, you can use the transformer and that transforms a bunch of HTML into, into separate Facebook instance article elements. And uh, it also contains the client, and you can use the client to push articles to Facebook using the API. So here's an example of such a, uh, how you would create an article with the, with the SDK. And th in this case, I just say, well, I, I want to have an Insta article um, with a title, with a subtitle, and a publishing time. And in the end, this is just a very small one, but in the end, you just say article render to doc type HTML. So I think it's pretty easy to use and the SDK is pretty good. So uh, our backend uh, team was really happy with uh, the way it worked. So here's an overview of some elements Facebook supports. They have a few more, uh, but what you can see, it's mostly elements to build up the HTML on your page. It's not really about integrating external systems like Google does. It's more about, we have a blog quote, we have a caption, we have a feedback form, etc. Uh, 
there's a very small link on these slides. Uh, I will publish my slides obviously after my talk and then you can click all these links. So what about monet monetization? How do Facebook and Google compare uh, ad-wise? So Facebook is basically a business partnership. You as a page owner, you have an agreement with Facebook saying, well, this is the way I want to publish advertisements on my page. And then you can use, for example, the Facebook audience network, in which case Facebook takes a 30% cut. Or you can publish your own ad advertisements within iframes, and then you can keep the revenue yourself. But it's a bit more work to integrate. But this is basically Facebook. Now for Google, um, it's kind of comparable. You can use the AdSense network. You can use your own uh, advertisements within an iframe if you want. Uh, the reason that you have to use the iframe is if you want to have your own JavaScript, you need it's the only way to get ja your own JavaScript is within this iframe. Um, there were some major media companies reporting less income uh, since they switched to Ant on Google. Uh, and they said the, the ads were loading uh, slower than they used to before, uh, and they're missing income. Google responded on this uh, on these complaints, saying that the advertisement companies, uh, the, the publishers weren't using the advertisement as they should, could they could have done better. Uh, plus, they said they were they were going to increase or to to improve these uh, the way ads were displayed, and they did since uh, 2016, since last year. So here's a few examples of how Google. Um, improved their their ad, ad displays. So, for example, the banners themselves are also loaded via AMP now. And on the right, you will see an example of the AMP for ads, as they call it, uh, on an AMP for ads enabled advertisement. And you will see a difference in speed. The banners are on top of the page. you can see a huge difference and you can imagine if you scroll down like I would scroll down within three seconds the ad, the ad will already be disappeared before it even is loaded so the amp version is really is, is within a second it's pretty nice uh, also if you click on an advertisement oh there it is if you click on an advertisement the, the detail page you land up on is also loaded via amp nowadays so another example if you click on a link an advertisement and I click it and I like within a second I have the, the advertisement landing page and it's obviously uh, it's also possible to display an ad within the content uh, now the AMP version is on the left so you can see the difference so if you have to choose, like AMP, Facebook Insight Articles, and budget or time is a limitation, which one would you choose? And I find it very hard to answer because it really depends on your target audience. And if the target audience of your client mostly uh, uh, is mostly landing on your web page via social shares, Facebook might be beneficial. But if people find your website using organic search, Google might be very interesting since it displays the the articles uh, above the regular search results. So for websites that are mainly around news or recipes, I would say AMP is really useful. Uh, people Google for a name of a recipe or they Google for a news subject and then it would be really nice if they uh, come in via AMP. However, in our case with Ginec, they have a huge fan base and the fan base is, is interacting on Facebook a lot. Uh, so they saw uh, an increase since they enabled Facebook in articles of 30% more traffic to the website and less people aban uh, abandoning the website. But they hardly see any difference uh, since they enabled AMP. And it's mainly because the, the content on the website is like opinionated, deep blog posts, it's not really news, it's not, it's not something that people Google for. Uh, also, Facebook launched a way to convert Facebook Instant Articles to AMP like two or three months ago. So if you manage to get this, this the Facebook Instant Article article using this SDK, for example, um, just like you would render it to HTML, you can also render it to AMP, making it very easy to create the version of Facebook Instant Article and then also create an AMP version. But before we cheer and celebrate, I think we should think twice if we want to do this. Because do we want to hand over our data to Google and Facebook? 
people won't be uh, visiting your website anymore, mainly for, f uh, if, uh, for example, Facebook, if you click on an article, people only see these articles that are shared on your Facebook page, but all the other nice articles and relations that you set up in Drupal, I don't know, in, in the Drupal site, you usually have like a news article and then in the sidebar, maybe you have a link to the author. And if you click the author, you'll see a listing of all the news articles from this author and all these features, you lose these and people only read the articles that you share on your Facebook page. So people won't be visiting your website anymore. And what about the open web and the open data that we're used to? These two companies now kind of creating a second web, in my opinion, uh, in parallel with the open web. And what is the impact for us developers? Do we still need to build websites in a few years' time? Or should we just give our data to Google and Facebook? And um, I don't know, future, future will tell. But I think you can do it without them. Um, the reason these two companies stood up with these, with these techniques and tools is because the web pages that we built are very slow. Uh, these numbers from, from 2015, I think at the moment it might be even worse since we like to have big images, big videos on our web pages. And we, we developers are, are, I would say, um, it's a correct English word. We use Blast Fiber, we have huge screens to develop websites and we hardly test if a website loads on a, sl on a slow device or, or, or on a bad connection making these websites bigger and bigger and bloated and bloated. So if we look at Google and Facebook and see the rules and the tips that they have, like the requirements, and, and use these techniques to improve our own web pages by being reserved for JavaScript, by being reserved for, for CSS, combining CSS into one file, using a CDN to deliver your assets, for example, use lazy loading for images that are not being displayed above default, and make sure the goal is loading the web page within one second, it's very achievable. There's software to test it, and it's, really, it's not even that hard. I think if you spend a few hours at a current website that you've built, you can make it much faster within a few hours of work, and you, and you uh, help your clients a lot with it. So it's a bit opinionated, but I would say I think we can do most of the work that Facebook and Google do ourselves as developers. Just look at what they're doing and the they, their technique, and I, I'm not sure, uh, but. My gut feeling would say, uh, be careful with implementing it. So this is basically what I have to say, and I would love to hear your experiences, your questions, your opinion. I'm not an expert, so if you have more to tell the audience, please do, but step up to the microphone since this is all recorded, so uh, the people at home can hear your questions and remarks. Hi, thanks for a great talk. Uh, sorry, I don't have any experience to share myself, but just a quick look at Drupal.orgs. Yes, there's at least three modules. Uh, there's an AMP module, a simple AMP, and an AMP theme. Um, do you have anything to say about how they support this? Yeah. I'm not sure if you could, uh, the, the, the sound is a bit soft on the microphone. Um, so the question is, there are a lot of Drupal modules and themes already available, uh, and what's my experience, right? So. During the, the Ava Yinek website, we tested the, both the Facebook and the AMP uh, modules. And if you have a basic website or just Drupal core with some fields, it works pretty good. Uh, within a few minutes, you have it up and running. However, the website that we've built uh, is, is hugely built around paragraphs, for example, and field collections. Um, and it wasn't possible to, to implement paragraphs. There is an issue for it that might, it might be in the future, but we couldn't, we couldn't use it in our project. But yeah, if you have a, a basic Drupal fields, it's it's pretty good, uh, pretty good modules for it. There is a talk, by the way, tomorrow about uh, about Google AMP and how to implement it in Drupal. So it might be interesting to check that out. Hey, I know you. <laughs> Not a good catch guy. Hi, uh, uh, Eric Huis uh, from the Netherlands. Um, I was uh, um, uh, thinking. Um, you uh, optimize the websites. Uh, uh, accessibility is, is one of your main main things you work on. Um, now you use these tools from Facebook and Google, and um, uh, yeah, you also mentioned that uh, with a bit of effort you can speed up your website as well. Mm -hmm. um, was it worth implementing these tools over optimizing the website yourself? That's a good question. Uh, in this case, the client uh, basically told us to implement these techniques, so we didn't 
we didn't check it out. But it's, it's a really good question. And I think in the time that we spent um, implementing AMP and, and Facebook Insert Articles, I, I think in 20% in, in of the time we could have get the website to load within a second, for sure. It took a, it took a pretty much amount of time to implement this. Follow-up question. Um, uh, is there much difference in implementing time between those two? Uh, according to, I, I didn't build it myself, according to a backend developer, he was really fond of the Facebook uh, implementation, the SDK that you can use. It's really easy to, to implement. Um, he had it up and running like within, uh, I believe, a day of developing. So uh, the face he was very excited about the Facebook uh, SDK. Uh, he wasn't, he was a little less excited about AMP, but um, I'm not really sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, remarks, tips? Yeah. Buyers, thank, thank you for your talk and really great presentation. Besides Facebook and Google, there are two big players in this industry or area. It's uh, Telegram, mm -hmm. the messaging app. They have also instant articles, but it's too different from Facebook and Google. And there is Zen. It's technology from a Yandex. It's Russian search engine. And it's also different from this. Mm. What's your opinion about the future of this? Are they going to have a war, like it's between React and uh, AngularJS right now? Or they will merge to something uni united, unified, something unique, and they will actually will end as one, one technology? Mm -hmm. What's your vision on this? So, um, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know for sure, but I would say like competitors for Google, such as, I'm not, I'm not sure, a Russian search agency or a company or a Chinese search company, they probably gonna, gonna make their own software and, and competitive, competing software such as AMP. Um, but for tools such as Telegram, it might be very beneficial to use the AMP since it's open source and they can use it already. So I'm not sure what happens, um, but I think it's, it's it's not a coincidence that Facebook now enabled uh, the way a, a way to like generate an end version of your of your uh, page with their software since they they had a feeling that like most uh, a lot of publishers have to choose between either Facebook or Google if time or budget is limit a limiting factor uh, but now since they enabled like publishing AMP via the Facebook SDK it, uh, they make like the publishers choose Facebook maybe above Google, um, but I'm not sure about the other competitors. Oh. <laughs> so uh, before you run away, please remind you to the contribution sprint on Friday. If this is your first time at DrupalCon, it's a really amazing experience. Uh, I attended mine first, I think four or five years ago. Uh, they have a lot of mentors who are very eager to help you writing your first patch or testing your first patch. And at the end of the day, it will finish with a live commit on stage by usually WebChick or Dries. Uh, it's a goosebump moment. So if you haven't uh, attended one before, please do. It's really exciting. And help me giving better presentations in the future. Uh, the DrupalCon, if there will be a DrupalCon next year, uh, do the survey and uh, please uh, help us making the sessions better. So thanks very much and have a great DrupalCon.